This is Car Guys New England, your YouTube channel for anything automotive. This is Jay with Car Guys New England, and we are continuing to work on the Lowrider Caprice. Now, in the last video, we uh, hit a little setback, and unfortunately, I had to wait for new donuts because the original donuts in the car uh, didn't fit these new cylinders from Black Magic. But now, these ones, if I very carefully just slide it down, you can see. They fit beautifully, so I'm gonna get those on here and uh, we'll get the cylinders ready to go in the car. I have the first donut on here and a pro a probably a lot of you are watching and you're like, well, one donut's sufficient enough. I've found that donuts actually have a tendency to wanna bend, uh, so what I like to do is put on number two and Number three, so I actually run three donuts on the front of my cylinders. Now, the other reason I do this is this actually gives the car a little bit more of a lift in the front end for hopping and stuff like that. So uh, that's how I set these guys up. So another thing that I'm gonna be using is uh, deep cups uh, compared to the shallow cups because I'm putting in brand new springs. So this actually allows the cylinder, and I'm gonna pick up a cylinder here. Let's see. Uh, this actually allows the cylinder and the car to sit a lot lower. Um, and this is to give the springs a chance to break in. Once they break in, you can run standard shallow cups in the front end. Uh, the other thing too that I like to point out is that you want to make sure that you install a lock washer on your uh, half 20 fine thread three quarter inch bolt um, and also that you use Loctite in the end of this and the idea is that you want this to basically you know be held on here without any issues so make sure that you do that when you uh, install your uh, your bolts that you put the um, thread locker on there and then just get these tightened up. And then at that point, you're, uh, you're pretty much good to go as far as uh, to install the front cylinders. All right, so now we're just gonna take some uh, non-permanent uh, thread locker or Loctite. Um, this is the blue stuff, so I am just going to quickly apply this to the bolt. And uh, I just want it so this doesn't back out. Now it's not a common thing for it to uh, really back out of the, the cylinders, but just to be, to be safe, I'm doing that. And uh, all we need to do at this point is take our cup and we are going to Put it on the end of the cylinder. Now I pulled the shaft a little bit out just to make this a little bit easier for me. So now that is attached. And now we're just gonna take this half 20 bolt and start it into the cylinder. So now that we've installed the uh, half 20 fine thread three quarter inch bolt into the end of the cylinder, uh, we are going to take this uh, three quarter inch met wrench and uh, we're just gonna tighten this down uh, until the lock washer is flat. And then at that point, we are good to go. So it only needs to be finger snug pretty much um, with the lock washers flat now. And um, that's not gonna back out with the uh, thread locker in there. So this is the uh, the old cylinder setup that was in the car has the shallow cups and you'll also see this big space in here so this is good for once your springs kind of press down a bit and they're broken in 
then it's good because that'll get your car back up a little bit again. Uh, and again, I was running the uh, three donuts on that. Um, the problem was the black magic cylinders, obviously you can see they're much bigger uh, in diameter. So the holdup was I had to wait for these donuts. Also, you can see the deep cups will allow the car to sit a lot lower um, looking at that. So, you know, with this, you gain probably about two inches of height. Um, and this is a two inch drop, obviously. All right, so I've laid out the, uh, the old versus new. So down in the bottom here is the new, uh, new cylinder uh, with a deep cup. Uh, and also a new coil. Now the new coils actually have flat ends on both ends. Also the other thing that you'll notice is this coil is spaced out a decent amount uh, compared to the old one which is more broken in and that's why that one is running a shallow cup. Uh, also the uh, older coil you always put the end that isn't flat with the little pigtail on it uh, facing down into the control arm. So that's uh, that's the difference between the old versus new. Now you're probably wondering like why am I going shorter uh, with everything? Well number one I'm allowing the coil to break in it, then at some point I can always put in the shallow cups and that's going to raise me up two inches on that. Uh, but there is a suspension geometry change that's going into the vehicle and I'll get into that uh, once I start assembling the front end in this video so you guys can see why I'm doing what I'm doing here. So we're here uh, on the passenger side of the Caprice. I have the uh, cylinder ready to go. I also have the spring ready to go. So we are going to just gently install the cylinder up into the, uh, the spring pocket. And uh, I'm going to be very careful not to... Uh, nick or damage the uh, the fitting as we go up in there so the cylinder we're just going to push up into that hole and uh, now we're going to get the spring in place all right so the cylinder and the spring are in uh, at this point this side is ready um, what I'm going to have to do is put the spindle back uh, with this just supported by the jack stand down below. But we have the cylinder in, we have the spring in, and it uh, looks pretty good. So now that that is in place, I'm going to use this custom fabricated spindle. I'm going to get that on here, so I'm going to take these uh, castle nuts off, uh, get the spindle in place, and then uh, I can start buttoning up this side of the vehicle. Take the lower castle nut off. We'll take the upper castle nut off. And uh, now we're going to take the spindle that's down here. And uh, oh, ah, that's heavy. And we're going to take this spindle and we are going to get it seated on the lower ball joint and get the upper seated as well which might take a little finagling um, uh, and there we go that's the uh, the spindle assembly on the caprice so one thing that you're going to notice is this spindle right here is uh, four inches actually lower uh, on this so this is going to give me a much higher lockup on the car and uh, it's going to hop a lot better and also these are reinforced uh, it's not uh, just simple um, uh, cast cast iron so I'm going to go ahead get the uh, castle nuts back on these uh, and also get the steering linkage reattached to this and uh, then we'll move on to the other side of the vehicle all right, so we're just uh, tightening up the lower ball joint castle nut, which I think I got it. I just need to line it up for the uh, the pin, so we'll uh, take care of that. All right, so the uh, cotter pin has been installed in the uh, lower ball joint. I got to put the castle nut and cotter pin up on the upper ball joint, and then uh, I can just rotate this into position, and I'm going to reconnect the steering shaft, which is right there, the uh, tie rod ends, 
So we'll get this uh, wrapped up in a few moments. All right, upper ball joint is back together. I'm just putting the, uh, the steering end link back on. Just tightening that down. And uh, this would be the all the way locked up height of the, uh, the setup. All right. So that's what the front end will be like all locked up. That's going to be pretty damn high. Since this uh, spindle didn't come with the rotors, we're going to take apart uh, this original spindle and borrow the, uh, the rotors off of it. So it's pretty, pretty simple as far as uh, removing the, uh, the grease cap and uh, just standard removal of everything. So I'm gonna get this all apart. I'm gonna coat this in uh, axle grease, uh, which I have right here. So it's uh, high temp disc brake and wheel bearing grease. So we'll get that on there um, and get this 11 inch rotor apart and uh, on there so we can uh, start buttoning this up. We're gonna remove the entire brake rotor and I'm just making sure that everything that belongs there is there. And then we are going to very carefully put it back. Okay, so we are Now on here, we're going to take the castle nut and this should only just be finger tight to get that on. So we're just going to go and then we'll line up where the cotter pin goes. The brake rotor is on, attached. I'm gonna go do the other side, but I just gotta get this uh, cap on, and then I'm ready to put the brakes on. I gotta figure out the brake line, so I got a brake line extension kit, but I don't know what I'm doing, and I know for a fact that the calipers are not gonna reach uh, at this point, so I gotta figure that out. All right, so one problem that I ran into, uh, the brake lines won't uh, fit the, uh, the spindles because they're too short. Uh, I already got the clip out and uh, but I found that the line won't let go so I put penetrating oil on it and I'm gonna have to wrap this up another day. So that concludes part eight of the uh, Lowrider Caprice hydraulics upgrades. In the next video I will be installing these uh, brake line extenders. Uh, hopefully some penetrating oil does its job so I can get those off easily. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. If you have questions or comments or uh, you think the house call is about you, be sure to comment down below. This is Jay with Car Guys New England. Until next time, take care. It's not there. There? Who's the fucking nihilist around here, you bunch of fucking crybabies?